I've clicked onto the Global Tropical overview for February the 19th, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the Athletics pressure on mine alone, it will make decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look towards your local other office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we've got a few systems active across the tropics today, but we're really only going to be talking about two. We've got one in the South Australian Ocean. To orient yourself a little bit, this one is off the coastline of Madagascar. You can see it's centered here. And this could be a threat to Mauritius and La Reunion uh, over the course of this week. And we'll get into more details on that in just a moment. But we've also got a low off the coastline of Brazil. Uh, this will be towards the end of the video when I go real deep into this, but a neat little South Atlantic storm that could be a rare tropical cyclone for this area. But I'll leave a timestamp to this storm if you want to uh, watch that portion of the video first. But like I said, we're starting off in the Southwest Indian Ocean. So this is our storm right here, again, off the coastline of Madagascar, centered a few hundred kilometers offshore. And this system is doing pretty well for itself. It's got a pretty well uh, favorable environment. You've got a pretty well developed uh, outflow boundary here, or sorry, not outflow boundary, but outflow channel here south of the storm, and one as well to the north of the storm. And between that, you've got all of this convection blowing up uh, naturally uh, from all that divergence. Now, this main burst here on the western end is the one to watch, as this appears to be where the low pressure system is. You can see that here on the shortwave infrared loop. We have some easterly winds to the south side of the convection, and we have some westerly winds to the north side. And this implies an area of low pressure somewhere in here. Now, exactly where it is within this convection and exactly how well defined is it, that's something that we don't really know. We don't have an ASCAT pass at all over the course of the nighttime hours. I don't even think we've had, excuse me, I don't even think we've had one over the past day to hit the storm. So we really don't know exactly what's going on beneath the clouds. But given the satellite trends with this organized convection and the apparent area of low pressure, just given the low level flow, I'd say that we're getting close to tropical cyclone development here uh, north of Mauritius and La Reunion. Now you might ask, where? why is the system tracking east? Usually these storms track towards the south. Uh, really, we've got this big trough across the eastern, uh, so not eastern, but just across the entire Indian Ocean. I'll go back here to the GFS, and you can see that here. Here's your big trough, and this is keeping the storm tracking to the east. But do not let that catch you off guard. The system will be making a pretty sharp turn towards the south as that trough is going to leave the scene very quickly and high pressure is going to build behind it that alongside a trough here south of madagascar is going to dig in is going to allow for a pretty sharp turn towards the south or southwest and exactly where this turn occurs is crucial if the system takes a little bit longer to make this turn, we could potentially see the system come east of the islands. If it makes it a little bit earlier, we could see the storm come right through both Mauritius and La Reunion. You can see here on the microwave imagery that we got a few hours ago, this, here's the big blow of convection. And the main reason I want to show you this is potentially some signs of tropical development. We've got some maybe curved bands here in the convection you can see that it's sort of curved here in this part of the convection we've got another one sort of like this uh here and this could indicate that the system is getting more developed and this is a common sign that you see in developing tropical cyclones and just given this and all the trends that i see on infrared i wouldn't be surprised if when we get an ASCAD pass this becomes a tropical cyclone but i should say that even if the system is not a tropical cyclone right now even if maybe something happens on ASCAT and it's not well developed at all, un unlike what satellite does suggest, it's, it's likely to become a tropical cyclone at some point. The environment that you see here that's very favorable is forecast to persist over the next few days. You can see that here on the model. Even by Tuesday night, we have all this divergence aloft sustaining over our system at the tropical storm on our model. Now, the, the system is, like I said, going to make that turn as a ridge builds to the east. And uh, this is going to be a little bit tough for the storm uh, because as the system turns east, or turns south rather, the ridge that's underneath providing the upper level divergence is going to set up a little bit to the east. You'll note that the center is about here and our low is under here. So it's a little bit displaced to the west of the ridge. And this is important because now we have all this strong flow aloft coming over the system. Now you might ask, is that 
really a bad thing. You can see the storm in this model is tracking by the same general position that or direction rather that these winds are going. That is true, and that could potentially help the storm a little bit, but the flow beneath this layer, which is the top of the troposphere, it is a bit different. You can see this here in the sounding from the GFS. Here's that flow from the upper ridge. But as we go below this layer, we've got more southerly winds in the mid-levels and even turning into full easterlies towards the surface. And this creates a moderate shear of about 10 to 15 knots on this sounding here. And it's not a big shear. A storm that's well-developed can certainly fend off that shear, but it will likely put some pressure upon the storm and models have been trending back a little bit on the intensity. We've seen models like the GFS back off on the initial intensity or the forecast intensity even because of this shear. You can see the impacts of the shear on the HAFS model. Uh, this is one of the hurricane models de developed by NOAA. And you can see earlier in the run, we've got deep convection sustaining around it. This, this would be a healthy tropical cyclone ready to intensify. And it does do so on the model. But what you'll see eventually as the system does come south, here's the island of Mauritius on the southwestern side of the map. You can see this dry air denoted in whites and browns here north of the system. And this is going to start pushing into the storm and you'll see the impacts of this. Because remember, while this, this, the, the dry air is up here, the flow from that ridge is pushing towards the storm. So this is going to try and push it in. And what you'll see on the model is that we start to get an erosion of the deep greens on the northern side and it really becomes more white and even as it passes just east of Mauritius on this run it gets all dry there and we've actually got a pretty significant decoupling taking place here on the model because of the shear and the dry air now in this case if this was a cyclone the core has been completely busted open on the, on the northern side and this is a low level center and the mid level center is down here pretty significant tilt with height, and that would cause the system to weaken. Now, something important to note here, pay attention to the pressure in the center. You can see the red L there, 983, and the system got down to about 978. It's not too much weakening, and this could still suggest that the system is still pretty strong, even when uh, the shear begins to really take its toll on it. And this is important, particularly for Mauritius and La Reunion. Even though that we are seeing on these models the models that the system is likely to weaken on approach, the system is not going to likely rapidly weaken, and we're not going to see the system fully dissipate away like that, just like that. It's, it's, it's not that strong of shear. It's moderate shear, but the system, if it does get, you know, say as strong as maybe the half it says here, that could allow the system to fend off the shear for a little bit more, and it could take more time for the dry air to erode the northern side of the storm. And especially if this comes further west, like I talked about, if it takes the turn a little bit earlier, comes towards the islands, that could mean strong winds across the island. And keep in mind as well, all the moisture is going to be kept to the south side of the storm because of the shear. So you're going to get a lot of heavy rainfall, a lot of heavy, uh, strong winds, and you could also get some flooding issues here, even if the storm doesn't even come ashore, even if the storm center rather, does not come ashore. Uh, that is something important to note. And same case for La Reunion. While right now you'll see, you'll, you'll see on this run, it stays east of Mauritius, there's still potential for the system to come west towards you. And you can see that depicted most well in the Mauritius, uh, the Mateo France forecast cone, sorry, the Mateo France forecast cone here. You can see that uncertainty and the potential of where it could track depicted well here. We have the center track here, potentially going into Mauritius, and you can see it's a bit west of where the Hafs was, but you can see both islands are well within the cone, and this storm in this red area could track anywhere in here. It could track potentially further east, like the Hafs, or it could potentially track right through both of the, these islands. This sort of an approach angle is unfortunate that this system could potentially impact both islands directly here. And if we do potentially get a track maybe further north, like I said, all that convection is on the south side. So you're going to get a lot of impacts spreading across both islands. And I'm concerned, especially if this system does come west, of potential flood issues for both of these islands, particularly La Reunion, just given the topography on that island. So that's really going to be something to watch over the next few days. And keep in mind what I said with intensity. 
The Matteo France still forecasts the system to approach the islands as a, a cyclone, even though it is getting sheared by that time. So it still could be a significant storm, and it's absolutely worth uh, paying attention to. And I'll leave a link to Matteo France at the top of the description, so you can go to our website and get the latest advisories and information. I'll also leave a link to the Mauritius Meteorological Service, so you can get the latest bulletins from them on the storm as it approaches both of the islands. But I'll have more videos on this over the course of this week. That's all that I've got for this one video, as we've got now a second system to talk about. This is the South Atlantic Ocean, and you can see this is in an area that we really don't talk about too much. This is the coastline of Brazil here, and this is a rare potential tropical cyclone off the coast. And we don't really get too many storms here. You, you will note that we never really talked about it last year. I don't think we had any storms form here. I think the last one may have been in 2021, and that was during the winter time. Uh, but we don't really see too many storms form here. And you might ask, well, why is that the case in the South Atlantic? Well, one reason is the sea surface temperatures are really not very favorable where most storms do develop. We have the storm right about here that I just showed you on the satellite imagery, and you can see the sea surface temperatures are not really favorable. The the uh, minimum requirement is about 26 degrees Celsius, this yellow line here, and it's just on that barrier right now. And that's one of the reasons. But another reason is we don't really have a feed of, say, tropical... Uh, moisture, I should, not, not, not tropical moisture, I guess I'm trying to find the right word. But we don't really have a source of tropical disturbances across the South Atlantic. You know, in the North Atlantic during hurricane season, you have tropical waves that come off the coastline of Africa. We don't really have something like that in the South Atlantic. You can see there's a lot of warm waters east of Brazil. It's just missing the key ingredient, a disturbance. And the intertropical convergence zone does not extend usually pretty far south uh, you know, to, to be favorable for potential tropical disturbances in the South Atlantic. It just does not happen all too much. So you end up getting not many storms in this region, and really all the storms that form in the South Atlantic come from storms like this that started as a non-tropical low. Now, over the course of the past few days, the system has been spinning off the coast of Brazil, and the system was, like I said, at one point non-tropical, but it is now fully tropical. It appears to be. You can see this is a scatterometer passed from about a day ago, and we had no fronts connected to the system, so we didn't have anything like a warm front or a cold front on there. And how we can tell is if you look at the wind barbs on here, there's no specific wind change. You, you don't have, like, northerly winds here turning directly into easterly winds that could potentially denote... Uh, maybe a cold front or a warm front. You don't have that connecting to the center of the low here. And that's been the case for a little over a day now. And really what we're watching for is this convection now to sustain itself over the center. You can see it's a little bit sheared. There is some northeasterly flow aloft pushing the thunderstorms to the west side of the low. Uh, but this will be weakening over the next few hours. And that should be its opportunity to become a potentially rare tropical cyclone here. And as I say tropical, because we have the, if you look south of here, you can see all these clouds streaming away in more of a counterclockwise manner. This is something uh, notable in tropical cyclones. You, with subtropical cyclones, you get some impacts from the oceans, uh, mainly convective uh, uh, dynamics there from the oceans. But in terms of wind, you can also get more uh, dynamics from the atmosphere. You can get more baroclinic as, as an example, and that can be more of your subtropical characteristics. But this appears to be more fully tropical. Uh, one feature we look at uh, alongside the counterclockwise flow is you look at the warm core or how warm the core is throughout the troposphere. Tropical cyclones are warm core in nature uh, as compared to non tropical uh, systems where they're cold cored, and that just means like in a hurricane. It's warm in the center of that storm, not cold. And that appears to be, at least from what I can see in model cross sections, what the system is turning towards right now. And it makes sense given the convection blowing over the center. Now, the environment, like I said, it's going to be getting a little bit more favorable. There is some shear right now, but you can see here on the GFS, we don't really have, as we get into the day on Tuesday, much shear to talk about. There's some maybe light northerly winds, but this is much backed off from where it was uh, right now. And you can see on the sounding from the GFS, we don't have any strong winds cutting across this region to shear it. 
and this should be its opportunity to become a tropical cyclone. Now, something that could hold it back is the dry air. You can see that we just have this black area here sort of inserting itself right into the eastern side of the storm. And this is a lot of dry air. And this is going to be a big issue for the storm. You see, it's really well wrapped in there. And if it does, you know, struggle to this, it could keep it from becoming a tropical cyclone. And this could be a marginal case where it just barely becomes a tropical cyclone or just barely misses being a tropical cyclone. But regardless, pretty neat system to watch here off the coastline of Brazil. The good news is this is going to continue tracking offshore. This is a 500 millibar height anomaly chart from the GFS. The reason why it's been slowly moving here as compared to most lows that just race off the coastline of Brazil, is we have, excuse me, this big area of high pressure well to the south in the South Atlantic. But as we get towards the latter half of this week, a trough will be digging in across Chile and Argentina, and that will begin to set the western end of the ridge. And you can see this opens a door for the storm to escape out to sea. So no impacts are expected here along the coastline of Brazil. Just a really neat potentially rare system here in the South Atlantic, and it's just going to be something neat to watch. And I'll probably have some posts on uh, Twitter more so, uh, that more, more than I already did uh, so far, as the system does continue to spin here off the coast. A really neat system. Hopefully it does become a tropical cyclone. I would like to see a South Atlantic tropical storm, as we don't think we've had one in several years. I think there may have been a case of one in 2021, but I think that might be debatable on if it was tropical or subtropical. Uh, but before then, I don't know, it may, may have been uh, maybe upwards of 10 years since we've had a South Atlantic tropical storm, uh, just to give a sense of the rarity of this. Uh, but that's all that I've got for today. I won't really likely have made two more, uh, excuse me, any more videos on the South Atlantic low, but I will certainly have more videos on the system here in the Southwest Indian Ocean. Again, for those in Mauritius and La Reunion, stay tuned to your local weather office in Mateo, France. I'll leave their links to their websites in the description. You can get the latest information there, and I will have further uploads of it over the course of this week as the system does develop. Make sure you prepare accordingly, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching.